Hello, so welcome back again. And uh, we are really enjoying in uh, design of various electronic circuits and systems using this free open source electronic design CAD computer added design software. The name of this software is KeyCAD. It has inbuilt NG Spice as a simulator, the Spice simulator called as NG Spice. So it's free and open source and we have covered a lot of tutorials earlier. In that series today, let us talk about the step response of this circuit. So the objective of the today's module is to understand how we can simulate and analyze the step response of a circuit. So you see this is an operational amplifier right over here. The manufacturer provided IC. The name is TL072. You can type this number in a Google and see what kind of operational amplifier IC this is. So this, I would say, this is the JFET input operational amplifier. It means the transistor used inside this op-amp as a differential amplifier are junction field effect transistors. And uh, with that, I have connected the photodiode model right over here at the negative pin of this amplifier. So how do I model a photodiode? For example, photodiode is a sensor that conducts current when the light falls upon it. Okay, and it primarily works in the reverse pass mode. We have covered one tutorial module earlier to this. So if you are new, you can refer back to that model, how we have analyzed the complete a photodiode sensing circuit in that case. I will provide you the link for that as well. So I have this current source that is modeling the current from the photodiode. When the light falls upon it, it generates the current. That's the basic principle. There is this uh, shunt resistance across this uh, current source. Ideally, it has infinite value, but practically we have taken it to be 10 mega ohm and the input capacitance, total input capacitance that includes the capacitance from the photodiode, the capacitance at the differential input pins of the op-amp and some other parasitics in the overall circuit, the total capacitance is about 54 picofarad. So I have taken these values based on referring to the data sheet of the op-amp and the information of the photodiode. Of course, you will also have some information from the data sheet of the photodiode if you are really designing such circuit to read out the signal from the photodiode. So you can see that I have configured this amplifier as a current to voltage converter. So input is a current coming to the negative pin, output is a voltage. Positive pin of the op-amp is connected to the ground. And in the feedback, the negative feedback, this register, which is set at one mega, sets the gain of this trans resistance amplifier. Since I use the capacitor in the feedback path for the stability, as well of the circuit, I don't want circuit to oscillate. So I provide that 1.6 picofarad capacitor. So together are uh, their impedance is the parallel combination of capacitance reactance and the resistance. And therefore this circuit is also called as trans impedance amplifier. Obviously I need to power up the op-amp through the voltages. So I have used the dual power supply of plus minus 15 volt. You can uh, go up to 30 volt as per the data sheet. You can go as low as 2.5 volt as per the data sheet. So it depends. And uh, here are the power pins, pin V plus and V minus of this amplifier right over here. So how I picked up all these components from the library by clicking right over here. Uh, I called up this, I typed this name TL072 and I see that I placed U1A part of it. It also has U1B 
and U1C. So I have used two part. I have skipped U1B. That is another op amp. Why? Because I only need one op amplifier for this circuit. So how I picked up these op amp from the library, then how I placed them, how I picked up these voltage sources from the library again, how I picked up registers, capacitors from the library, how I picked up this uh, current source, which is pulse current source, uh, because we are going to simulate the step response. So all these procedure, uh, picking up the components and the device from the library, I just click here. I have explained it several times in our previous models. So if you are new, you are encouraged to refer back to those models. So right here, you see, I can type I pulse because I have placed that and used that component. I get this one. Otherwise, you will have this. So I pulse you have. Let's say you type only C here. Then comes the capacitor. Let's say you type here TL07. Two. That's the part we want. So it's a dual low noise JFET input op amp. Here is the link to the data sheet. You can click and it will take you to the manufacturer website. Okay. So you see that if you click here, it has got unit A, unit A, one, three, two pins with unit B, seven, five, six, and unit C are the power input pins. So we have used only two parts that is U1A and U1C. And then you need to specify the parameters for the input current source. So you click here uh, or simply you click the double click the uh, current source and you see that here you can change those parameters. So Y1 is the initial voltage, not the voltage, rather it is current because it's a current source. Y2 is the final current value. So it's from zero to one nano ampere, then delay time of two pico, rise time of two pico, fall time of two pico, width is 50 micron of that pulse and period is 100 micron I have chosen. So you can set these values as per your requirements. But remember, you should refer to the slew rate from the data sheet of the op amp. Then, once that is done, I need to add the SPICE model from the manufacturer for this IC. I'm not using a generic operational amplifier. This is the real world design that we are doing. So what I have done is I have downloaded this SPICE model for this IC. I just typed the Google. I opened up the Google and uh, typed this number and asked Google SPICE model of TL070. Then it took me to the manufacturer website and I downloaded it. I saved it in some folder. And now I'm going to show you how to call that SPICE model file from that folder. So I double click here. You see this one. I will click the simulation model. And here I have an option of built-in SPICE model, but then there is this option, SPICE model from file, from the file, okay? So I click here. And in the download folder, I have this folder in which I got these two files. But when you will download uh, the SPICE model, you will only have the first file with this type 301. You can use any other OPAM also. Accordingly, you will have different SPICE models. So you store it in some folder you want. Okay. And uh, these two files were required uh, uh, as an initial example that we covered previously. Uh, you can also refer to that. For that, we needed two files because we used two OPAM and uh, UA1 and U1B, U1A and U1B both. So that's why we needed these two, four, two files because we wanted to call the SPICE model twice in our circuit simulation. But now we are using only one part. So we need only this file, okay? So if you click here, uh, you see that I've got this uh, file. Uh, I provided a path. Then I clicked here and I selected this one. With that done, I have to click the pin assignment. And here, there was this mismatch between the symbol pin and the model pin. Now, how I understand it, I will explain you in a moment. Look. 
the pin number one in the symbol of keycard. This is the symbol of keycard. In the pin number one is output. Pin number two is negative pin. Pin number three is positive pin. Pin number four is VSS. Pin number five is absent. Pin number six is absent. Pin number seven in is absent because those three pins are for part U1B, which we have not used. And pin number eight finally is the V plus uh, supply, positive supply pin. So what we did is just remember this, what pins are there, one, two, three, four, eight. So click here, simulation, take it right here, click the pin assignment. Now, there was initially a mismatch, which I have corrected. So you need to fo follow this uh, sequence, right? So pin number one in the symbol is output. What is my pin number for the output in the model? So I will look here. Once you load the model here, dot sub circuit TL072. Output pin is pin number five. So I had to change. Initially, it was one or two, whatever number, but I then change it to five. Okay. Now, pin number two in the symbol of keycad is negative pin. So where is the negative pin here? Inverting input. It's a two. So I chose two. That's correct. Pin number three in the symbol is positive pin. Where is the positive pin? Non-inverting input. It's a one. So I chose one. So you have to click here and select accordingly. Okay. Don't get misled. Or otherwise, results will be wrong. Four. Pin number four in the symbol is uh, here. VSS or the negative pin of the power supply. And pin number four is here. Also the negative power supply. Look. Now pin number five is absent, so not connected. Pin number six is absent in the symbol, not connected. Pin number seven is absent and not connected. Finally, pin number eight in the symbol is V plus, that is a positive power supply. And we have to find what is the positive power supply pin in the model. Model says pin number three, it's pin number three. So I have got it pin number three. Once that is done, you can click OK and be assured that your mapping between symbol pin and model pins are perfect. Once you do that, save it, go for ERC. ERC is the error rule checker. I have already carried out that. Ignore the warnings. Uh, errors are zero. That's what I want. So I run it again and zero errors. Close it. Go to simulator. Go to simulator and look, I have done this simulation here that I wanted to show you. So what I have done is go to edit analysis tab. I actually uh, have selected a transient analysis where time steps are one micron and final time is 100 micron. That is my simulation requirement. But uh, what am I... Uh, applying as an input so right here right here you see that i have a current pulse current source where it goes from zero to one nano and the delay rise time uh, fall time can be ignored but it has a pulse width of 50 micron and period is 100 micron and that's what i get here so I have from 0 to 50 micron, the red signal is the input current, that is 50 micron, and the period is 100 micron for the red curve. That is the pulse input and step response. So it's steps from 0 to 1 within uh, very, 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 uh, the rise time is 2 pico, uh, two pico second actually, right? So it's really hard to see it as uh, very small look at this rise time okay this fit on the screen and then your output also jumps with some certain right here is like little bit uh, peak uh, the, that's the overshoot this is what actually we expect and then it stabilizes with a constant uh, constant voltage of approximately one volt okay for the negative also for the negative from when the input jumps from one to zero your output also is following so slew rate uh, can also be uh, linked with this analysis so this is the tutorial module for 
showing you how to simulate a step response of the operational amplifier circuit with the example of photodiode amplifier. Hope you understood it. If you did so, share this with others for a wider reach. Uh, stay tuned for more information content like this. Till then, wish you a happy learning. And one more point is you can always click save file and export current plot as PNG. And maybe in the folder, just give it some name and it will save your file. You can also export it as a CSV file. As you can see, there is this option, explore current, export current plot as CSV. So that's the simulation of step response. What else you can do? Let's say I want to use uh, plus minus five volt and see the same analysis, how it responds, how the amplifier will respond. And with that done, go to simulator, only click simulate and we'll see that there is not much change. How about you play with uh, the resistors, let's say the shunt resistance, it is like only one mega and go to simulator and see how your response changes. So there is little bit change right over here. So similarly, you can simply, let's say this capacitance is instead of 54 pico, it is, let's say more nano. So there should be some change or negative impact. So we can see that. I look at that now. Your input capacitance is increasing. The output is degraded. So you got to design your circuit in such a way that your performance remains intact. So I kept it 54 back. I keep it 10 mega. Let's have an impact of gain now. Instead of 1 mega, you have a large gain. So the bandwidth will be lesser. We have done that in a previous tutorial. So refer to that, the AC response. And now look at that. Look at that, your rise time, your, your rise time is longer for the output, okay? So this is not what you would want, rather you would go for one mega and uh, come back here. And you can see that this is the kind of response you would expect, okay? So see you again soon.